Welcome, dear viewers. I'm Shant Kerbabian, and this is Cases. Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch released reports last October, which together provide numbers and examples of civilian casualties from U.S. drone strikes. Particularly in the wake of President Obama's May 23, 2013 speech on the future of the war on the so-called terror. Now, U.S. officials rarely mention civilian casualties by U.S. drone strikes in Yemen, Iraq, Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Sudan. When they do, they generally offer extremely low estimates in the single digits. Where does the reality stand here? And how do really drone strikes breach international humanitarian law? I am joined today in the studio by Ms. Rouj Al-Wazir, the co-founder of Support Yemen. Welcome, Rouj. And also from Yemen by Mr. Bara Shaban, an activist and national dialogue member. Welcome, Bara. Welcome. Now, before we get to our discussion with our guests, we have a report. Let's check it out. Drone aircrafts are the unmanned aerial vehicles are warfare aircrafts controlled and managed to strike by pilots from the ground. Some of them are also pre-programmed to attack specific areas and targets. The purpose of drone aircrafts does not only revolve around striking through missiles and bombs what is supposed to be an enemy target, but also to survey and spy. Drone strikes have greatly targeted areas in Pakistan, Afghanistan, Yemen and Sudan as an efficient tool for the war on the so-called terrorism. For instance, Although the United States does not routinely speak publicly about operations involving drones, President Barack Obama has confirmed that they regularly strike suspected militants in Pakistan's tribal areas. The use of such unmanned aircraft in Pakistan and other areas in the region began under the rule of President George W. Bush, but their use has more than doubled under the Obama administration. Controversy has erupted in the States and the United Kingdom over the ethical and the legitimate use of drones. To many, drones are seen as a collective punishing instrument to a large number of people. In March 2011, a drone strike was launched on Pakistan, causing the death of more than 40 civilians who were gathered at a tribal meeting. Basic information about the number of civilians and militants killed by drones is controversial and highly politicized in Pakistan. The United States refuses to provide information about individual strikes, regarding them as secret, although officials do claim drones kill very few civilians. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Rouge, welcome back again. Thanks. Uh, Rouge, Drones, this is a huge topic. This is very controversial. Uh, in the report, we talked about drones in general. Mm -hmm. We like introduced drones to people. But uh, can, you, can you tell us about what is the controversy about drones? What is this huge uh, issue and huge talk about drones? To get down to it, really, it's this piece of technology that's being manned from thousands of miles away by a pilot in um, Nevada, in the state mm -hmm. of the United States. Um, and uh, they're seeing objects, they're seeing people, and are be these people are being targeted by this piece of technology up in their skies. Um, and there aren't really any rules that people get to know about. People, nothing, is, um, nothing is told to the people. There are, there's, everything's in secret. There's a secret kill list. Mm -hmm. There are two kind of strikes going on. We have the targeted ki um, killings, and we have the signature strikes. Mm -hmm. These drones end up killing... Signature, uh, signature strikes are uh, like started now more with uh, the Obama administration. Correct. Right? Because Correct. before, with uh, President uh, George W. Bush, it was more uh, certain names and there was a kill list. But now there is this... Uh, I mean, the, uh, the pre President Obama took this into a very, very different uh, level, into a mm -hmm. different course. Uh, the drone program started in 2002 mm -hmm. under um, President Bush, like mm -hmm. you mentioned. We saw two uh, people that died un under the drones. Um, under uh, President Obama, you know, the Nobel Peace Prize winner, we ended up seeing at least 427 people killed. The and these are just from targeted. Yeah. Exactly. Escalation, a huge escalation. Um, and signature strikes really target people based on personality, ba based on behavior. And uh, anyone that's considered a militant is 16 years old and older, and anyone that carries an AK-47. Mm -hmm. Now, if you know anything about Yemen, Yemen is a, uh, a country where at least half the population are under the age of 20. And when, once you have a, a boy, you are given an AK-47 as your gift. Mm -hmm. So yes, the country 
is armed. Um, you have a whole population that is under 20 years old, so a whole population that can be considered uh, a militant, and entire populations that are living under fear from this piece of technology that's being manned from thousands of miles away because they're seen as a suspect because they're 16 years old and older. Okay, now allow me to go to my guest in uh, Yemen, Mr. Mm -hmm. Barra. Mr. Barra, uh, welcome uh, to Cases Again. Uh, Mr. Barra. Here's a question. We were talking about the situation in Yemen and how people in Yemen usually receive weapons and this is how they are identified as militants. Is the situation the same in neighboring countries? Like, is the situation the same, let's say, in, uh, in Sudan? Is the situation the same in Somalia? Or even if in Afghanistan or Pakistan where there are drone uh, attacks currently? Well, uh, to, make, to make the story short, the, the idea of the drone, uh, the drone strikes is that it follows a pattern and uh, it fo follows the pattern of a, a group of people living um, under, uh, 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 under certain circumstances. So in Yemen, because uh, it's considered to be um, a country where, where, where it's, uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's a real threat for the, uh, for, the, for the United States, so it follows the pattern of, the, of uh, people living in the remote areas, and whoever the pattern of their of their lives is considered to be the pattern of a militant, he is uh, he's a he's a drone uh, he's a drone uh, victim. Uh, this is almost the, the same situation where it's happening in Pakistan and it's happening in in, in Afghanistan uh, also. In Pakistan, especially in the area of of uh, Waziristan, uh, the the situation is almost. As, as, as close as, uh, as Yemen, where people, normal people would be carrying their uh, clashing codes, they would be uh, carrying their AKs uh, down, down in the streets. For normal people, for people living there, this is a very normal situation. And uh, for, for, the, for, for, for a drone hovering from over the sky, seeing a person who is uh, a male over 20 years mm -hmm. old and carrying an, an AK, so that's a suspect militant. Mm -hmm. But uh, Mr. Barr, let me let me talk about how legal these drones are in general. Not, we're not talking only about Yemen. We're talking about all these uh, areas, all these countries that are being attacked by the United States. How legal are these drones? Some people argue that, uh, for example, since the United States is in state of war with Afghanistan, for example, it is completely legal. This is warfare. But at the same time, how legal are these uh, drones in Somalia, in uh, Yemen? in uh, Sudan, in Iraq, in the Iraqi war, how, how legal would that? <coughs> well, I think this is exactly the point. In, uh, Yemen is not a declared war zone mm -hmm. as, as the situation was in, was in Afghanistan when the United States decided to invade Afghanistan and then, and then, and then Iraq. Uh, Yemen is a country which is supposed to be an ally to the United States and the mm -hmm. Yemeni government is supposed to be uh, an, an, ally, an ally to the United States. Now you, you see the situation inside Yemen where, where supposedly it's an, it's an ally to the United States and you see uh, drones hovering in, in, in nine provinces uh, uh, now we're talking, uh, we're talking. and, uh, and uh, of course uh, by, by, by the eyes of the, of the Yemeni law, uh, l l let me start by the Yemeni law, it's uh, illegal to, uh, to, to have extrajudicial uh, uh, killing. This is exactly what's happening with the, with the drone strikes. And by the international law, it is totally forbidden to commit uh, any uh, execution without having, having uh, a court, without ha having a trial. And not to mention that in many, uh, in many countries, in many cases, it's illegal to kill, uh, I mean, the, the idea of killing a person to begin with. Okay. Now, uh, Ms. Rouge, yeah. the, there is currently a huge uh, pressure from international uh, governments and international mm -hmm. entities towards the United States to stop its drone program or to uh, at least present numbers, present, uh, like make it clear to the world. Mm -hmm. How effective do you think the, this would be? I think it's a step. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's a, an, an essential step that we need um, in order to hold our governments accountable for um, the civilians that are being killed and in order for us to get more transparency for in the program. I don't think that's the end goal. However, I think that's a, a, an essential step for us to end the program. Um, I think it needs to come from the bottom, and that is what we're seeing. We're seeing um, communities that are, are affected by this taking a stand and saying, we do not want drones. Instead, we would like the missile that cost $60,000 that killed my brother, we would mm -hmm. like a school with it. 
Um, we would like um, a hospital that you just bombed. So we're seeing a lot of movements all over the world, in Yemen, in Pakistan, in the United States, people that don't want their money to be spent in war. We're, we're sick of going to war all the time. What we need are resources. What we need are social needs. Mm -hmm. and and it, is, it is not only in international, it's not only about the war, it's also internal economy. Exactly. I mean, uh, specifically in the United States, mm -hmm. you're, a, you're a U.S. citizen, and Sorry. you know better about this. Exactly. I mean, the economy in the United States mm -hmm. is uh, like uh, currently uh, yeah. crumbling, let's say, but the, dr the drone pro uh, program is still very effective, very active. So as an American yeah. citizen... I know, and I'm uh, extremely frustrated as an American citizen, mm -hmm. and this is why I think we need to take that, uh, we need to voice our opinion. $11.3 billion of our taxpaying dollars is going to war, is going to fund the drone program. Mm -hmm. Not even just, you know, um, other sorts of warfare, but the drone program. And instead, what we could be doing is um, uh, spending this money on employment, on health care, on schools. We just shut down 30 schools in my um, state in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. because we didn't have enough money. We had to, uh, we had to but let... But for drones, there are a lot of money. Absolutely, lots of money. We shut down the Congress because we didn't have enough money. We couldn't agree on a budget. But we, that same day, we ended up buying at least three or four drones, which each cost um, $10 uh, million. And th th so th this, is the, this is a big problem. Absolutely. And uh, uh, like the American people are certainly uh, like some sort of, they're sort of awake now and they're sort of aware mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. what's going on. And this is one of like uh, your, your movement and other, uh, as you mentioned, the other movements in the United yeah. States are an evidence an example of that the American people are aware now yes. of what's going on. Absolutely, I and mean, people are really um, frustrated and w want to have jobs, want to have health care, want to go to school. Mm -hmm. They do not want to go and see another Iraq war. They do not want to see their money being spent in um, other things that are not being, that are not helping them, mm -hmm. that are actually going against them. Okay, now, uh, Mr. Bara, here's a, here's a question. Uh, this, uh, the, the drone program was uh, f uh, basically designated to uh, fight terror. Now, how uh, like effective this program is in fighting terror? Well, for many, for many Yemeni people now, the United States doesn't mean uh, a lot of uh, aid projects. It doesn't mean international cooperation. It doesn't mean uh, a, p a political relationship between, between two countries, between two sovereign countries. For, for many Yemenis now, the United States is a drone uh, carrying missiles, uh, bringing death from the sky. Mr. Barra, it's this not is only exactly what we were told. Mr. Barra, yeah. it's not only for Yemenis. It's for all the countries that are being attacked by drones. So, uh, let, uh, like, exactly, I'll, I'm going yeah. to talk just about Yemen, Yemen in the second because segment, it's but, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm just mentioning Yemen because it's a, it's an example of what's mm -hmm. happening here, and it's uh, it's the country where I live in, and it's it's, it's a small example how effective are the uh, the, the the drones policy uh, to the interna to, to, to the international relations of the of the United States. Mm -hmm. Um, as I was mentioning just a week ago, this is th these are the words of uh, of uh, of the people that we met in a recent drone strike that targeted a wedding uh, convoy. And the United States and the Yemeni government quickly announced that it, was a, that it targeted AQAP militants. And then uh, me and, uh, and, and, and Ms. Rouj, uh, we, we went there uh, to, to the area ourselves. We met with the families. We met with the, with, the, with the injured. And we found that 12 people, poor villagers, got killed by this uh, uh, drone strike. Another 14 were, were, uh, were injured. And this is for them, this is what, what, does, what does the United States mean, uh, mean, mean for them. Uh, a, guy, a guy there mentioned for me a quote I would like to, to, to say here. He said, we received packages of food from mm -hmm. the USAID development pro, uh, uh, program having the US uh, stamp on it. But tell the Americans when you meet them that their drones killed us before our families were able to, uh, to eat, uh, to eat for, 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 from that food. This is a small example of a very poor villager living in, that, in, 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 in such a remote area. This is how the image of the United States, and, this, and, and not only the United States, it's affecting also the Yemeni, uh, the Yemeni government. Exactly. Now, uh, Mr. Rouge, let me, uh, I'm yeah. going to quote from uh, President Obama's, uh, when he, uh, President Obama's speech address, he said, uh, when he was talking about criticism about the drone strikes, yeah. he said, USA, o the U.S. Uh, drone program is only uh, carrying out such attacks against individuals who pose a continuing and imminent threat okay. to U.S. citizens, and it's not to punish individuals. Mm -hmm. Please comment. P yeah. Thank you, because who is an imminent threat? Mm -hmm. Is Dola 10 years old an imminent threat? This 10-year-old girl was hugging her mother. They were on their way to a doctor, 
uh, visit and on their way back got uh, got targeted by a drone strike and ended up dying. She was holding her mom so tight that they couldn't even, even when um, they um, they were all in different pieces that they were they found parts of their bodies together. Um, is she an imminent threat? I, I, I pose this question to Pre President Obama. Is Ahmed um, Ali, 69 years old, an, an imminent threat? What does it mean, imminent threat? I'm, I mean, I think we have entire communities that are really searching for answers. Because these people that are dying are not, are not um, the definition that Obama is giving us. And, um, and he also, in that same actually speech, he says that we do not target civilians. Mm -hmm. And we only um, kill when we have to, when we cannot capture. Again, I, I challenge President Obama because in another strike in Wasab and also in, in um, Sanhan, um, a, a school teacher, uh, Ali Goli, he was on his way um, he, with his cousin, who was a taxi driver. He picked up two others on, um, to drop them off. Um, and before they, he could drop them off, 50 meters away from them was a military checkpoint. Mm -hmm. But before they could reach the military checkpoint, they got striked and they got killed. And their, their bodies all scattered in different pieces. They couldn't even tell who's who. So ex exactly, uh, here's another question for President Obama. Was it really difficult for you to wait 50 meters so they could reach the military checkpoint and so they can arrest them? Okay, I'll... Sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna argue that, I'm gonna argue that yeah. in a minute. We'll sure. have to take a short break. Yeah. I'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, short break, we'll be back, staying tuned. The people fighting today, we funded. Saudi Arabia supports sectarian instigation and permits clerics to issue fatwas allowing the killing of followers from different sects. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about the uh, U.S. drone program. Uh, we have a report now, a uh, second report, uh, summing up a different point from a different angle, the U.S. Uh, drone strike. Let's check it out. Seven months after President Barack Obama laid out U.S. rules for using armed drones, a bureau analysis shows that covert drone strikes in Yemen and Pakistan have killed more people than in seven months before the speech. Each drone strike kills more people on average in both countries. The number of strikes fell across the two countries in the seven months after the speech compared with the six months before. Yet the overall death toll increased. This analysis will raise questions about how much rules constrain the drone program, as Obama claimed would in his speech. On May 23, 2013, President Obama explained how a new policy would govern the use of drones. He said using drones for targeted killing is legal, but added that to say a military tactic is legal or even effective is not to say it is wise or moral in every instance. Obama also added that the same human progress that gives us the technology to strike half a world away also demands the discipline to constrain the power or risk abusing it. The United States has stepped up drone strikes as part of a campaign against Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula regarded by Washington as the most active wing of the militant network. However, according to local Yemeni authorities, an airstrike launched in December killed around 15 civilians who were on their way to a wedding. And Human Rights Watch said in a detailed report in August that U.S. missile strikes, including armed drone attacks, have killed dozens of civilians in Yemen.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Rouge, before the break, you were uh, talking, you were so passionately <laughs> talking about all those uh, stories. And let me just argue one little thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of people might argue that all these stories you're talking about are legitimate and they're so sad and horrific. But at the same time, a lot of people say, like, this is collateral damage and this is, this is bound to happen. We're fighting terrorism here and civilians might be, um, like, might die. So, uh, what can we say about this? Yeah, civilians just, you know, might happen to be in the middle. You know, um, media and organizations are so quick to report on drone strikes um, more recently, and that's great, except they're quick to report it in a way where it's like, suspected Al-Qaeda militants uh, um, killed in latest drone strike. And if it wasn't for people on the ground, we would really never know and really believe the media. But are we... I pose a question to, to the viewers. Um, are you really going to believe a government that has b had a long history of lying to its people? Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about both the Yemeni government and also the United States. Um, for a very long time, it's only through the uh, WikiLeaks that we find out about the U.S. drone program. Um, former President Ali Saleh um, you, uh, told... Um, told uh, the United States that we'll keep saying these bombs are ours, mm -hmm. uh, but later on through WikiLeaks find out the truth. Again, the Yemeni government um, claimed that uh, 13 Al-Qaeda, for instance, uh, the latest strike, 13 uh, suspected Al-Qaeda militants, um, suspected, suspected uh, Al-Qaeda militants um, uh, killed. Then we go on the ground and find out it's, you know, it's brothers, it's sisters, it's, these people are human beings with histories, with stories, and they have families. And, and everybody knows them. And mm -hmm. we're talking about a village that are very close to each other. If there was an Al-Qaeda member amongst them, they would be happy to capture them and take them to the Yemeni government because they too do not want Al-Qaeda. They too do not want terrorism. They too want to live in safety. They too want support and, and um, live, li live it with dignity. And this is one of the points. This is one of the points. Like uh, Villagers and people cannot stop... Uh, like uh, terrorists from uh, coming into into their villages, and uh, there's nothing to do about this. So bombing an entire village because you suspect like five or six militants exist there, and you suspect you're not even sure that these are militants. I mean, where's exactly. what is the moral of that? Exactly, and and, and e these people that are being you know killed, if they are really Al Qaeda they end up uh, being very, very low target militants. Mm -hmm. So people that are very accessible, very, um, you know, either part in the Yemeni government um, or um, are very well known in the community. So if they were, if they wanted to be captured, they easily could be. Mm -hmm. um, some people have, um, like in the in this January drone strike, there was um, uh, a man who was an alleged Al Qaeda uh, militant, uh, but he also was working for Ali Mohsen. Mm -hmm. So he was a bodyguard for Ali Mohsen. So don't tell me that he's not uh, easy to capture. Okay. Um, and uh, President Obama said we only kill when it's impossible to capture okay and if there are imminent threats so we're talking about high high value targets okay uh Ruj, allow me to go uh, to, uh, now to bara and like i'm gonna shift the focus now to yemen for a while uh according to human rights watch uh, human rights watch investigated six selected airstrikes since 2009 mm -hmm. and concluded that at least 57 of the 82 people killed were civilians but uh yeah exactly i mean if you when you when you strike a wedding, I mean, and you say it's a collateral damage, of course there are going to be civilians killed. When you, when you, when you strike inside, inside the village, a shuttle that was, that was moving between, uh, between two, two villages, and then we find, we find a body of, her, of the mother with, with, with her daughter, of course, of course there are, going to be, uh, there are going to be civilians. The only way really to combat any militant's activity is by the rule of law, is by enhancing law enforcement into, into the ground. That's the only way you can really enhance a, a, stable, a stable country. Uh, unfortunately, this is not the situation with, with, with Yemen. And unfortunately, the only way that the United States is now looking into, into Yemen is it's, it's a security card. Mm -hmm. It's the background of, uh, it's the backyard of, the, of Saudi Arabia, and it's a security card, and, and they, they suspect that this is where AQAP hatches. And, 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 and as long as the, this, this narrative, this, this view to, to, to Yemen continues, this program will, will, will continue. Unfortunately, um, I don't want to say this, but this is, this is the, the, the reality. And, not, and, and then we end up seeing such a report like the, like the, uh, the, like the Human Rights Watch. I'm investigating those, uh, those strikes myself. I end up following in each case, at least we have one or two 
uh, civilians, if not the majority of the people who were killed uh, are civilians. Mm -hmm. And let me focus on another uh, angle here. We're talking always about the about the civilian casualties, which is which is a very legitimate uh, way to talk about. But we're, we're also forgetting about the communities that are living under mm -hmm. drones. When me and Ms. Rouj went to the area and we, we, we heard the drone buzzing overhead, it's very terrifying. I couldn't imagine myself li living in such a village for, for, for more than one day because the fact that this drone, you don't know when or where it's going to strike. You just have to uh, accept the fact somehow that it's, 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 it's really targeting uh, militias. And now for the people there, they know. They know that these drones are not just there for, for surveillance. Now those drones are really killing people. Uh, but uh, how, can, how can internal laws affect American decision makers? How can we, if, how can, like, what is, what, is, uh, what is the thing that needs to be done to uh, push, to lobby, to pressure the American decision makers? Well, first of all, we need to put more pressure on the Yemeni government and mm -hmm. specifically on the Yemeni president to say these drones have been doing us much harm than they've been doing us good. And we need a very clear uh, announcement from the from the from the Yemeni uh, government, so that the Yemen so that the U.S. government doesn't keep saying we have uh, approval from the from the Yemeni government. The other role is that the human rights activists working in the United States and and, and all around the globe should put more pressure, media-wise and through through all advocacy measures. Uh, towards the United States saying you should follow the rule of law, you should respect the international uh, uh, law, you should respect the human, uh, uh, human rights in this, uh, in this country and really uh, fo uh, like you have, you have to play by the book. I mean, when, 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 when we say that y you're coming to a, to, to a sovereign country mm -hmm. and you're saying you cannot enhance law enforcement into this, into, in, into this country, you cannot just support the, the policemen to do their work I mean, in, 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 in many strikes, we found that, as, as Ms. Rouge uh, was saying, that those people were accessible. They could have been arrested easily. They could have put to trial. But the Yemeni government, the United States government, wants, just wants to shortcut that effort. They don't want to go through a lot of hassle into going to courts and then having trials, and then those people might be freed again. They just want to go like, and, and, and travel the easiest way, just go over those cities and, and, and drone people. Mm -hmm. Because it's easier, basically, to the United States government. Exactly, yeah. Okay, now, uh, Ms. Rouge, al allow me to ask you this. How do you see the media coverage? How do you see the media coverage of drone strikes? Uh, specific, let's talk about Yemen, since we're talking about Yemen. How do you see the American, the Western, the Yemeni, Arab oh, media outlets, how th their coverage to the drone, uh, American drone strikes? Um, I think now the media started picking up on it and started discussing it. But again, like I was saying earlier, a lot of these mainstream media um, agencies and organizations talk about it in a way where the headlines always, especially if you look at like New York Times and, and all these you know mainstream mm -hmm. news, suspected Al Qaeda militants killed. You know, it's always always the headline has to be about suspected Al Qaeda militants. And if you actually investigate and you find out, it's it's more than half the time it's civilians that are um, that are dying. Mm -hmm. You're not also talking about the other side of war. You're not talking about the psychological side of war. You're not talking about the women and the children that are impacted by this war. Um, so you're not, you're, you know, you're getting the coverage of, oh, a drone strike happened, which is great, because before you didn't hear that. I mm -hmm. mean, this program has been happening for 10 years, at least 10 years. American people didn't even know about it at one point. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but the American people started waking up and you had a lot of people started writing about it, um, either through blogs and, and then it entered into the mainstream media. Um, but again, um, it's very minimal, and uh, and again, it's it talks about it in a very different angle, and through through the eyes of security, through the eyes of counterterrorism, uh, bombing our way through security, mm -hmm. murdering people through security. But uh, for security, sorry. Uh, how much do you th how, like? What is the proportion of American people that are convinced that the drone program is uh, actually helping in fighting terror? I mean, like, uh, let, let's be realistic. I mean, American people by now, like, uh, sort of know that uh, the drones are helping no one. Mm -hmm. And they're basically escalating the problem more. Mm -hmm. And uh, the drones are not effective. They're even creating more extreme, more extremism. And they're uh, uh, actually helping the uh, extreme Islamists yeah. in counter-attacking. Yeah. So uh, don't, d don't you think this is a legitimate point here? Absolutely. Um, but I think we're also talking about a specific kind of um, population. You, you, not everyone in the United States is awake and will watch, you know, mainstream. Uh, will watch alternative news or 
uh, your average American will watch Fox News, mm -hmm. and Fox News tells you um, that we're at war with uh, people that are bombing us, and that the threat is really real, and um, and if we don't, you know, kill them first, they're going to kill us. Mm -hmm. And so people are afraid. People are also afraid uh, of their um, husbands, their brothers. Uh, of going to war. So they'd rather have a piece of technology do the work than seeing their loved ones go to war. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the you know, majority of the population that we're talking about. So until we can convince uh, and show the real stories um, to these people, then I think that's when we're going to be able to have a, a, a major shift in policy. But right now, the policy is really, it's a money-making business as exactly. well. Exactly. And, and uh, the people that are profiting off of this war are people in Congress. There is private businesses that are making so much money off of drones. So unless we also do um, divestment plans, divestment campaigns, pulling away our money from these um, businesses and from Congress, shaming them. Mm -hmm. I mean, Congress is making money just for passing a law to make this uh, drone war happen. Okay, okay. Uh, but uh, uh, let me ask you about the Yemeni media. And how do Yemenis respond to the drone program in their own country? Well, it depends on where are we talking. If we're talking about the situation in Sana'a as an example, where a lot mm -hmm. of people uh, see those drones happening far away from, 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 from their city, that's where a lot of people would say, yeah, maybe the government is right, maybe uh, the Yemeni president is right, uh, we have a real, a real serious threat, especially when there was a bombing in the, in the uh, Sabine Square here in, 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 in Sana'a where mm -hmm. almost 100 soldiers were, were killed in that, uh, in that bombing. And, and that's how like, the normal people living in the main cities would view the situation. But of course, the, with, with more and more media coverage, the situation is, uh, is uh, changing. Uh, especially in August, when the people in Sana'a for the first time heard the drone uh, hovering over Sana'a, that was when the people started to get really angry and started to realize that these drones are one, one day coming to your own city. It's one day coming to your own home. So, um, uh, let me point, just give you sorry, a small example. Yeah. At one point, there were Yemeni people actually supporting the drone mm -hmm. attacks in their own country? There are, there are a group of people that we, we cannot, you know, uh, neglect and we cannot just ignore and say all, all the people are uh, anti-drones. There are a group of people who listen to the uh, Yemeni president, they listen to the Yemeni government and say maybe the Yemeni president is right. Maybe there is a, a real threat and those drones are there to help us. Uh, and but I, they see... Uh, but the, I, excuse yeah. me, I'll have to interrupt you. This is a very important point that I want to elaborate on after the break. We'll take yeah. a short break, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll be right back. Stay tuned, please. Beyond the lines, beyond the surface, depth, clarity, substance. the discourse beyond politics beyond the shallowness of everyday politics
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about drone strike and now focusing on Yemen. And uh, early on, I was asking my guest uh, Bara about the about how some people in Yemen, in Yemen are supporting and supporting for the uh, U.S. drone. Uh, U.S. drones and but uh, let's continue this point because this is very important. A lot of people in Yemen, uh, like uh, not a lot of people, but certain people, certain groups support the uh, U.S. drone program, and their uh, their argument is that they too are afraid of terrorism and they don't want terrorism in their in their country. But what can we to, uh, what can we say about these uh, people? Well, um, if you see to the recent st uh, strike that happened, uh, the one we were talking about, the strike that targeted uh, a wedding convoy, mm -hmm. the Yemeni, uh, the, like the Yemeni government, uh, officially said we targeted an AQAP militant. There was uh, there were militias uh, in a convoy, and we've tar and when we've coordinated with the United States to 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 to, to drone those people, and now when. There is, I have here the name of the, of, of the person that the Yemeni government said, Shoki al Baadani. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. They said, this is the only name that the Yemeni yeah. government announced. And now you've killed 12 people, injured 14 others, and announced that you've killed one person. Who are the other 11? Why, why, why are mm -hmm. we not asking this, this, this question? Mm -hmm. And not, n not to mention, that when we went there, this guy was not among the injured, was not among the dead also. They just brought out, uh, out a name, they pulled out a name and said, okay, we have to say that we've targeted someone. He's a very senior AQIP uh, member. Okay, uh, uh, his name is Shoki oh. al-Ba'dani. Let's, let, let's say we, 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 we've killed him. But, uh, but uh, we'll go to certain bullet points because one of the bullet points, the first one actually we're going to talk about, uh, discusses this thing. According to, human, according to human rights groups, U.S. strong campaign in Yemen execute suspects without trials and uh, this is what we're talking about you have suspects and you're being they're being executed without any trials what can we say about this but uh, you were saying well um, of course uh, this is the the question we always ask the uh, American uh, officials and this is a question I was in the in Washington all, almost a month ago, uh, ago and we met uh, people from the executive and that's when we told them, do you want to uh, support a stable government? Do you want to uh, support a stable, a stable country? The only way, I know it's going to take a, a very long time, but you have to enhance the rule of law. And the only way to do this is by law enforcement. Uh, just, just giving uh, for, for some reason that we have to, 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 to fly over the, those villages and we have to drone people because it's easier, it's uh, cost efficient, and uh, you're not sending you know boots to the uh, uh, to the ground is not the, re the, the it's not the real way to uh, support a stable government, especially in a country like Yemen where it's moving in a transitional period and needs to be stable as much as possible. And uh, the drone, uh, the drone program is definitely not helping in in keeping the sta uh, the country stabilized, uh, for sure. I mean, can you imagine who kind of investor would go to Rada when he knows that there is there are drones hovering over skies? What kind of investor now would go to Hadramaut and know that there are drones over sky, and yet he would go and invest in that in, in that area? Exactly. What kind of you know of, of, of local investments? What kind of government? What kind of country are we really building here? Okay, now we'll move to the second point, the second uh, uh, bullet point here. This is the Bureau of Investigative Journalism. According to that, the U.S. targets those who rescue and retrieve bodies from drone attacks, as well as those who gather at funerals to mourn those who have died from drone attacks. Rouge, we were talking about this earlier. Yeah. And this is according to the Bureau of Investigative uh, Journalism. I mean, uh, what can we comment on that? So there's, again, like we were mentioning, two types of um, strikes. There's a targeted and, and, and signature. And both strikes, um, okay. you have something called the double, double strike, mm -hmm. in which um, there's the first strike goes out, and then two, three seconds later, another strike goes out to make sure that the intended target was, absolutely, it was killed. Okay. So during this two, three second period, you have first responders coming in. To, they heard something happen. They just heard a bomb, an explosion. They want to go check out what just happened. And they end up dying mm -hmm. um, during that time that they're trying to help their loved one or whoever it was mm -hmm. um, in the strike. And so you end up, you know, they have this target that they want to kill, but they end up killing a whole population, a whole community, wiping people in numbers. So and even funerals, I mean, yeah. people are not allowed to gather anymore? No, people are afraid. I mean, because again, we're, who are militants? There's anybody that's 16 years old and older. Mm -hmm. If you are three uh, people or more, 
you're suddenly suspicious because what are you discussing? You know, you're, you could be discussing school, you could be discussing, you know, the weather, I mean, you could be discussing Doesn't so many matter. different things, but that, to them, you're suspicious um, because you're three, uh, you're over the age of 16, um, and so people are, are not going to weddings, they're not going to funerals, they're not even going to school. I met with this um, a school teacher uh, in, uh, in Abyan, who um, they bomb the hospitals, they bomb the schools, but he goes to school every single day in that, in that destroyed building ho in hopes that one day one of the students will come, will come back to school. Um, I mean, this is what you we're seeing in, 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 in many re uh, regions in Yemen, not just one area, we're not just talking about the south or the north, we're talking about an entire uh, Yemen. Okay, now the third bullet point, the third point is the following. According to a formal U.S. official, the use of drones overseas is breeding new militants with each attack. But uh, with, each, with each attack, it's breeding more militants, more extremism, and more uh, so-called terrorists. What can we comment on that? I mean, what a perfect situation would be for AQIP militants to, to come after mm -hmm. a drone strike that hits a wedding convoy and say, look, your government has not been doing you any good. The United States have been droning you. Your president is approving. I think the only way we have to fight back, we have to combat that. And that's, that's, and that's what's happening. Um, let, me, let me tell you a small example. Mm -hmm. In, uh, before 2011, we had three provinces that were affected by, by drone strikes. Now, with the continuing of this program, now we have nine provinces affected by drone strikes. And now this, this program is supposed to make you know, the situation better. It's, it's supposed to make the Yemeni people safer. And what's happening is the opposite. Why are those people spreading in other provinces if the drone pro program was a success? Why, 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 why are we seeing this? It's simply because that the, uh, whole, uh, that the whole program is causing more, it's, it's creating more enemies than, than it's uh, causing friends. Now we have the idea of low uh, level militants and that term didn't uh, happen before. We, we didn't hear about the, the term of low level mm -hmm. militants. Mm -hmm. And why, why, are the, why are there are now uh, low level militants? Because now more people are coming to them and say like, you have to join, we have to fight back. Uh, your government said not doing you any basic services. There are no schools, no hospitals in those areas. And when you can see what's, what's uh, happening in the opposite, it's, it's exactly the opposite. They're s sending drones with the same amount of, of their spending on those missiles. They could have bu built a, like a local school or a local hospital that could have helped the situation there. Mm -hmm. you know, we're talking about areas where are like really poor. Yeah. Like they, they like lack even the basic services. We're talking about like electricity and water, and those are the people that, that the government should be working for. Those are the people where we're trying to support their lives to become better. And what we're doing, we're sending drones. And now what they're all, what they're asking, just let us live, you know. Okay. Now, uh, Rush, do you yeah. agree with this? Like, there is a feeling of disgruntlement, and there is people who are who are saying that uh, uh, America, mm -hmm. the well, like in this case, it's the enemy now, yeah. and they're being attacked by this country, mm -hmm. and their country is not doing anything, yeah. and uh, certain terrorist groups are using this yeah. and trying to lure people yeah. into joining them and like yeah. escalating and fueling this more. Yeah, absolutely. I mean. You're, I, I think what we're seeing is people joining these groups not because of shared ideology, mm -hmm. because, but because of a, uh, a growing interest of, of seeking revenge or seeking answers, simply answers. People don't know why their brother or their, or their father or their husband died, but you have this group that's promising you answers, that's promising you um, like to get back at the people that did it to you. And mm -hmm. so you want to join that group. You, you have that support network. And so you end up, you're seeing, you know, people wanting to join these groups just because of that. Um, and, uh, and it's all over now. You know, at first it used to be in like, it was, used to be in numbers. And now you're really seeing a lot of sympathetic AQAP people. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we'll move on to the, to the fourth uh, point, which is according to international opinion, the international law does not tolerate the loss of collateral uh, damage or collateral lives. Now, uh, Ms. Rouge, according to international law, the, uh, it does not tolerate the loss of collateral uh, lives and co collateral damage, but yet we see that all the time in Yemen. What has to be done? Wh what can we do about this? What does, what does the international community have, yeah. have to do about this? Well, the United States specifically, uh, by ignoring, um, by continuing this drone program and by ignoring and not acknowledging um, the civilian deaths, it really risks um, the opportunity to really be building a democratic mm -hmm. and transitional Yemen. 
Um, and right now, I think what we need to be uh, doing as, as individuals and as a community is learn the stories of the people on the mm -hmm. ground. Really, like, you know, I, I, I ask everybody to just learn one story and share that story with, with um, their community members mm -hmm. because we don't, we don't know their names. You know, these casualties are always in numbers. You know, Human Rights Watch um, put out um, a report recently in October um, saying that there has been 427 deaths. That's, that's enormous. Um, but we don't know their names. You know, we don't know their stories, their histories. Many of them have families. Let's learn their stories and let's share that with the world because they're human just like us. And we need to share that with the world. Uh, but a lot of, uh, a lot of the American, uh, I'm not going to say a lot, but some proportion of the American public uh, agrees with this and, it's uh, and they argue that it's completely legal. We're in a state of war on terror. I, uh, well, again, I, by sharing the story, by bringing the war home, I think that's when we're going to be able to shift U.S. Pol uh, US counterterrorism policy in Yemen. Mm -hmm. We need to be bringing these stories home. We need to be um, raising awareness on the ground, talking about how people are making money off of this so-called war. Mm -hmm. Are these people really threats, or are they lacking basic needs? And this is why they're joining these militant groups. Okay. Uh, uh, but, uh, a question. Uh, do you think the international public opinion has shifted about the U.S. drone program? Well, I guess now it's, uh, it's, it's getting better. I mean, um, from before, because a lot of people didn't, maybe didn't know even that the drone policy existed. And in some cases, they would have agreed that, yeah, it might have happened on a, on a very, you know, on a, on a very small uh, level, like when you have a really high, uh, se uh, like, senior militant, and he and, and he's, was very hard to, to, to arrest, and then they've killed him, like what happened in Yemen in 2002. Mm -hmm. But now I think because of the continuous uh, uh, drone strikes from one side, uh, the, the media has uh, started to picking up the, uh, the, the situation, and I'm starting to share some of more stories. Uh, we were like, as in, we were in, in, in Washington uh, a month ago when we took one of our clients. Uh, he is uh, the relative of an anti Qaeda imam. His relative was an, was an imam at a mosque, and he, had, and he used to do Friday sermons against Al Qaeda, and he was killed by a drone strike. And we took that, that, that person, uh, his, his relative, to the United States and started to share his story in Washington with more and more people. I think by such efforts, we can combat the, 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 you know, just the, the, the idea of, yeah, we're only targeting senior militants. Those are people we couldn't, uh, we couldn't catch. It, you know, those are imminent threat and so on. Okay, now let's move on to the last uh, bullet point, which is according to uh, news agencies, uh, Yemen, the, uh, the Yemeni parliament voted unanimously in a call for the U.S. to end drone strikes in the country. But uh, yet, Rouge, let's talk about this. Yet, yeah. uh, where is it? Where is this call? Where is the, where is the firm uh, like uh, law or call from the Yemeni president or the Yemeni government uh, to the United States? Well, the parliament um, doesn't really have much of, of any power. Um, I think Bada can talk a little bit more about that. But uh, I think this effort was um, a way to really undermine Hadi's efforts right now. Mm -hmm. and, but the parliament has no power. Mm -hmm. It's not a law. It's just a recommendation to the Yemeni government, to President Hadi, to do something about it. And they said, let us know if you can implement it or not. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, that means nothing. I think this is just a symbolic gesture from the parliament. Um, and as I spoke to somebody from the, from the parliament, they said um, uh, that this was, it's been uh, discussed in parliament for a very mm -hmm. long time, specifically around after Al Majala and um, the strike in uh, Madib that killed the Sheikh. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, it's just a recommendation. We can't uh, really hold anyone accountable if it doesn't happen, and et cetera. That same day they, they passed this recommendation, there's still drones me, hovering in the skies. Of, let of me take that. this, let me, t uh, let me shift this to Bara. And yeah. Bara, we have two minutes. This is the final like, uh, two minutes for you. Uh, how, wh what does the parliament have to do? Does the parliament really have the power? Uh, uh, what has to be done in Yemen? Well, it's worth mentioning that this is not the first time that the um, like um, an official body inside Yemen speak out against drones. Mm -hmm. In June uh, this year, the National Dialogue voted anonymously also to ban the use of drones, and they said we criminalize the extrajudicial killing, including drones or targeted missiles or, or any other means. Um, but uh, the 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 real question is. 
who has like who has the his hands on the trigger mm -hmm. it's the people in the United States or well, those people are uh, are, are, are like, you know, living in, in, uh, in Nevada, and those are the people who are uh, dr uh, flying those drones and shooting those, uh, those people. So I think the question should be shifted to the Yemeni, uh, instead of the Yemeni government, because in the Yemeni government, when we talk about the Yemeni government's approval, we're really talking about one guy, and he's the Yemeni uh, president. Mm -hmm. The parliament doesn't approve, the national dialogue does not approve, even his, uh, his uh, like, uh, very close advisor does not approve, uh, approve this uh, this policy mm -hmm. but the real question should be shifted to the United States to the United States Congress are you going to do something about this now we have more stories coming out more people mm -hmm. you're cre creating more enemies and making both of our lives not safe okay but uh, thank you very much for joining us from Yemen also I would like to thank our ge my guest here in the studio uh, Mr. Rujal Wazir ladies and gentlemen this was the case of the drone uh, strikes on uh, and uh, Sudan, Iraq, Afghanistan, and we focused on Yemen until the next next case next week. Bye bye.